All right, in today's section, this if you haven't been able to tell already, we're going to take a look at something winter related. And winter has hit in full force. So how to prevent wintry runway runaways. It's very slippery out here. Very slippery. Now, so we have winter in Canada. Yes, we have winter in Canada. But enough already with the cold jokes. We Canadians get picked on way far too much about this. In fact, when you think of winter time in Canada, the satellite image and map at right shows that winter isn't all that bad here. Like, take a look at this. We hardly have winter at all. I, Manitoba over here, and then we got British Columbia over here, and then we got Newfoundland over here, and then up here we've got like the North Pole. Can't you see that? It's like, yeah, it's fine. Well, most of the time. So then what is all this going to mean to you? Well, of course, there's a multitude of new things to consider. Navigation, it's going to be a lot different, right? Everything's covered by snow now. What about getting dressed? Well, look at me. Lots of nice layers, good gloves, good warm hat. Well, you can talk about that later. And also, you know what? Hey, Kyle, you think I'm going to need these at all here based on that last satellite image? Well, yeah, okay, maybe I will. All right, anyways, whiteouts. Yes, sometimes. And then what about starting the airplane? That's going to be tougher. That's going to be a challenge. Weather. Lots of new things to think about when winter hits. And the performance of the planes. Check. Sometimes much better, though. So all of these are items that you're going to need to consider. However, each one of these could be up for a discussion on its own, and I'm not going to go there today. Perhaps we'll visit them sometime in the future. Now, what inspired the topic for this session is none of those, but something that is still very, very important. And it's very likely that you will find it in your everyday flight considerations. What's it going to mean? Wintry runway runaways. Every year it seems that you hear stories of airplanes that overrun or go barreling off the end of the runway. Winters, of course, cause this problem to become one that is even more of a trouble. And you know what? Most of the time the story goes something like this. Too fast and too long, we suddenly discover not nearly enough runway for us to stop on. Add to this dilemma the snow and the ice, the remaining runway is nowhere near grippy and nice. Ha, <laughs> poetry. Anyways, okay, let's keep going here. What's this going to mean? Well, winter runways present a lot of new things for you to think about. Specifically, the ways that they increase your landing distances, the greater distances and dangers that we find with a crosswind, with those same often sad runways. And, well, wouldn't you be sad if you had to spend the whole winter out in the cold? Like that runway? Just like that runway. It looks all cold. Now, before you go flying, let's talk about some of the things to consider with wintry runways. What about winter maintenance? Is the destination that you're going to even capable of having a snowplow go across it? Many airports do not have winter maintenance. So ask yourself, will the runways even get cleared? You must query, any winter maintenance there? Do they have snowplows there, sir? If not, you shouldn't even think about heading out in that direction. And here's a few examples. You can see Arnston right there, and then look at how it says no winter maintenance. What about over here at Brandt? Same thing, look at that, no winter maintenance at this particular airport. Also, we need to think about looking at the CFS. Maybe it's in the CFS, and look here, runway condition report. We need to call the operator, and there's no winter maintenance at this particular airport. Good grief, you're not gonna be able to go there. Now, sometimes we may see something that says limited winter maintenance. Well, that means depending on whether they can get the snow plow started or not, they might or might not have plowed the snow. So you should consider grabbing the phone in this case and giving them a call. Ask them if they have actually plowed the runway. Now, be sure that you have a person familiar with the airport. Sometimes what will happen is you'll get a nice city or municipal clerk who will say, well, they were down on, you know, uh, actually Bristol Road the other day, and I'm pretty sure that, you know, they, 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 they uh, did the, the runway at the same time. That's not good enough. Notice in the CFS how right here we have that statement. RCR, Red Earth Creek, we've got limited winter maintenance in this case. So, who do you call? Who are you going to call when you want to see if this runway is all clear? Well, in this case, it's going to be, it says the operator. So if I go up here to the operator, I can see, oh, municipal district number 17. In this case, phone number right there. 
Also, notice how there's a phone number down here too. Okay, that might be the better number to call because it's the one immediately following the statement operator. All right. Oh. <sighs> okay, what about checking the NOTAMs? Did you check your NOTAMs? This person did this day, and look at what they found. This was a student who came to me and said, hey, look at this, look at what it's like in Kenora, Aaron. Well, CYQK, runway service condition report for runway 0826, 100% frost covered. There's the date they went on the cross country, by the way. And then, well, CRFI, minus one degree Celsius, 0.50. Hmm, what does this 0.50 mean? All right, the infamous NOTAM J, it's worth remembering that we have to check our NOTAMs. All right, also worth remembering that many uncontrolled airports won't have these NOTAMs. Typically, you'll get a runway surface condition report NOTAM with controlled airports. Now, uncontrolled airports do do it too, but check, please check, please check. Okay, here we go. What does the CRFI mean? If we know the CRFI, then we can calculate how much longer the landing will take. And you did do a landing distance calculation, right, before you took off? I hope you did. You did that during your pre-flight briefing or your pre-flight planning. Remember, perfect braking would be given a score of 1.0. So if we have a CRFI of 1.0, we have lots of grip. However, if we have a case where, well, look at this. We have a CRFI that's getting close to zero. In that case, we don't have any grip whatsoever. So if I try to, good heavens, Kyle, you greased the floor again. Goodness gracious. Okay, so, all right. Good braking is 1.0. No braking is 0, 0.0. You're typically gonna end up with something in between. Now, if you've calculated your takeoff distance, you could very quickly use that chart in the CFS to cross multiply and check with your instructor on how this could be done. You can see we've got a CRFI here of 0.35. Notice that if it usually takes me 1,800 feet to get stopped, that 0.35, it's gonna now take me 3,700 feet to stop. Wow, that's a considerable increase, isn't it? Oh, okay, I'm trying to rush through this because it's so cold. All right, if you don't have a runway surface condition report or a CRFI, you still can get close, use the CFS, and then you can see how we've got snow, bare or packed snow is 0.12, anywhere up to 0.31. So not very good braking on bare packed snow at all. <sighs> what about crosswinds? Well, crosswinds and CRFIs have a lot in common as well. You can see here, Oh, that wind blowing right from that direction. Look at these marks on this runway. Woo! Anybody can guess what happened there. <laughs> okay, hopefully that's not going to be ending up you. We grab the airplane, take it out and take that. And then we imagine this airplane right here like this and like that. You don't want that to happen to you. So look at your CRFI and know the crosswind value associated with that particular CRFI. For instance, if I ever see a CRFI of 0.5, like we did in Kenora. So let's go over here. Let's look at this runway friction index here. Well, a crosswind component up to 25, and I would still be safe, and my airplane would have enough grip that it wouldn't drift across the runway. However, let's imagine that if I saw a CRFI of 0.3 in that NOTAM J. Well, in that case, 0.3, oh, good grief, a 10 knot crosswind can be enough to blow me off to the side. Now, remember, of course, that in gusty conditions, you need to use the biggest gust factor when you're calculating a crosswind. And as I mentioned, if you don't have a CRFI from a NOTAM, you can guess based on the surface conditions and the CFS. All right, okay, so what have you learned here? Well, we have this basic advice for wintry runways. Check them ahead of time. Is there winter maintenance? Has it been cleared? In the case of limited winter maintenance, what are you gonna do? You're gonna call ahead, right? Check the runway carefully before landing. That's to say in conditions where there's blowing snow. If it's a windy day and maybe the snow has started to fill in a runway that has been cleared, good idea to do a crossover midfield if it's uncontrolled and look and see if there's any drifts down there. Look at the NOTAMs. Be aware of how the snow ice might change your landing distance. Be aware as well of the crosswind component and how that relates to the runway surface. 
Give yourself lots and lots of extra space. Remember that you might apply the brakes and nothing may happen because it'll just slide across the ice. Now, remember, the CRFI does not guarantee that you're going to get in. You're going to have longer distances sometimes when you land. Okay, we've learned a lot, haven't we? So, by taking this advice and utilizing it, you can ensure and make sure of yourself that you're going to keep this airplane within the markers, both in terms of like, not like this, you're not going, oh, yeah, whoa, 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 or anyways, all the way off and towards the end of the road. Ah! <laughs>